In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can start using the Gutenberg page builder. So if you are someone who is still using the classic editor and you want to make a switch to the Gutenberg blog editor, then this video is for you. So here we are in our WordPress backend and here we have the version 6.1. And right now in the plugin section, we have installed classic editor just to give you a idea about how exactly the classic editor looks. So for, so let's go ahead and create a page and, and here how the classic editor looks like. Let's give this page a name here. We can simply type in our text and maybe we can add some images. And it's pretty much same as a simple word processing application. So you won't be able to create any custom design or any layout using this classic editor, but you can definitely do that with the Gutenberg editor. So let's get rid of this classic editor so that we can have the default Gutenberg editor. So let's deactivate this plugin first and let's delete this. Now Gutenberg is also available in form of a plugin, but right now we are using the latest version of WordPress. So we don't need to use any external plugin and it's better we go with the integrated version of Gutenberg in the WordPress itself because that one is a bit stable version. So let's go ahead and create a new page. And this is the first look of our Gutenberg editor. So let's get rid of this startup wizard. And here we can enter our page title. And after that, we can add our content, which will be in form of various blocks. So first step is to give it a title. So let's call it Gutenberg sample. And before we dive in, in the main content area, let's go through some basic settings that you should understand before starting using this Gutenberg editor. So first let's go to these three dots on the top right corner. And here we have the full screen mode, which is turned on right now. If we turn this off, you can now see the default WordPress navigation here. So just in case you want to see the navigation on the left hand side, you can do that from here. But I personally prefer to keep it on full screen mode so that I have all the concentration on the page editor itself. And we have a bunch of more settings here and that we will cover as we go along with this video. So right now let's close this box. Let's click on these three dots. And all of your page settings are now on the right hand side. Here we can see the visibility, published, URL, and all the other stuff. Featured images and all the basic stuff that we see for our page setting. Now, whatever block we will add here, the setting for that particular block will be available here itself. So as of now, there is no block on the page editor. So it's it. So that's why it's showing blank. We will get to that once we start adding blocks in our main content area. So right now we are at the page title and as soon as we hit enter, we are now in the main content area and by default to start writing anything in the main content area, it creates a default paragraph block. And so here in the block settings, you can see it's showing a paragraph. Even we have not entered any text yet. And if we just go ahead and paste some content here, now you can see that we have some settings for text color. So maybe we can play around with that. And we also have background option. We can put up some link color. We can change some link color from here and we can define the typography and set the size. And here, if you notice, once we click on this block, here is a toolbar on the top. Now this might look a little bit odd because it's showing on top of the block. So no matter what block you add in your content area, you will always see some kind of toolbar here. Now to get rid of this toolbar or to place it in a better way, you can again go to this three dot option here. And from here, you can select this top toolbar option. Once we select that, now we can see our toolbar is sticking on the very top. Just in case if you like that, so now you don't see any hanging toolbar on top of your block. So from here, maybe we can select this text and turn it bold or maybe turn something italics or make some link from here. But I personally feel to have a floating toolbar just so that I don't have to do this mouse movement again and again on the top. So it depends how you like it. So it depends. You can go ahead and try both of them and see which one works better for you. 
Now this one is just for the text. As soon as you start typing anything in the content area, it will automatically consider it as a paragraph block. But how about adding some more blocks? How we can do that? So for that, let's come down into a new line. For that, we need to just hit on enter. And now we are in a new line or we can say inside a new paragraph block. But this time we don't need a paragraph. We need some different block. So to access the block list, here is the plus icon on the very top. If we click here, we can see all the native Gutenberg blocks from the WordPress itself. So here we have the paragraph, heading, list, quote, and all the other stuff. So let's say we need an image. So let's say we need to add an image below this text. So either we can just drag and drop this block here. And now we can select any image from our library. So let's say we choose this image. And here is our image in the content area. Now, if you notice, we have some different settings on the right hand side for the block. And we also have a different toolbar options. So whatever block we add here, we get the respective options for the toolbar as well as the block settings. So in this case, it's an image. So here we have an alternate text option. We have the image size option. Maybe we can add border or border radius to this image. So all that can be done from here itself. Apart from that, if we select this block here in the top toolbar, we have various options that you can play around with. Or if in case you entirely want to get rid of this block, all you have to do is just click on these three dots here and you will find remove image option or whatever block you have added here. Or simply select the block and hit delete from your keyboard and the block will be gone. Now let's talk about the method number two for adding the blocks and this one is my favorite one. Let me tell you how. So right now we are in a new line. So in order to add a new block, all we have to do is just type in forward slash and here we can see the list of the blocks. For example, if we need to add some buttons here, we can choose the button blocks or maybe we can just start typing B U T T and here we can see the button blocks showing here. So as soon as we click on this, so here we have the button block added on the page. So we can give it a text. And now we have a button on our page. And on the right hand side, if you see, we have the block settings. Here we have the styles for fill or outline. So this is how it's going to look. And we can play around with various other settings. And if we click on this block here, we can also see the toolbar options are also updated. So here we can see the alignment and with these three dots, we have various other options. And in order to delete this block, again, we can just select this block and just press delete from the keyboard. Or we also have these three dots on in the toolbar. Here we can see copy, duplicate, insert before, after and various other options. And we have the remove button as well. And this method of adding block on page by simply typing forward slash and typing the block name is my favorite one because I don't have to move my mouse to the plus sign here. I can simply just keep on typing and add whatever block I want to add on the page. Now let's go ahead and add some more block here like this list block. So let's add it here. And now we can just start typing and create our list. And if we just click on enter, we will come down to the new item. So here we can add these items. And as soon as we press enter twice, it came down to a new paragraph block. In the same way, we can also type in forward slash. And in order to add an image, we just need to search IMG. So here we can see our image block. Let's click on this and let's upload an image from our media library. For example, this one, let's select that. And here we have an image added on our page. Once again, we have some different block settings, especially for our image, like alt text and image size. So we can play around with that. And if we click on this image block here, we can see some updated toolbar options. Now, as we have already added some blocks on our page, there might be a situation where you want to move certain blocks up and down on the page. For example, if in case we want to move this button at the very bottom of the page, all we have to do is to select the block which we want to move on the page 
and on the top toolbar we will have an option of move down and move up so let's bring it down so as soon as i click on this down arrow we can see it now came down below our list block if you press it one more time now the button block is below our image now there is another way by which we can move the block around on our page for that we need to click on this list view icon and here we can see all the blocks that we have added on our page first we have the paragraph then we have our list block then our image and at the end we will have our button here now this list view gives you an idea about what are the blocks added on your page and from here itself you can move around various things for example let's click on this image and let's bring it just below our paragraph so all we have to do is just drag and drop the image block wherever we want and now we can see our image block is right below our paragraph block and that is also visible from the list view as well once again we have the three dots option available here so this option is very much same as we see in the toolbar as well so you can choose any one of them so with this list view we will be able to see what are the blocks we have added on our page and we can rearrange them as per our requirement so this is a very helpful option so let's close this before this we have information option here which shows us about what the what are the stuff we have on our page and we also have undo and redo option and we also have tools here so maybe we can choose edit or select so right now we are in the edit mode so if we click on this plus icon here we can see all the default blocks from the wordpress repository and we can use all of them to create any kind of page design but in order to take the things to the next level you can go ahead and download some third party gutenberg blocks plugin and if i mention some of my favorite gutenberg blocks plugin then the number one will be spectra from the brainstorm force team the makers of astro theme number two cadence blocks from cadence theme itself and number three plus add-ons from Posimate. So you can use any of these three plugins. They are super powerful and you will be able to create any kind of page design using these plugins. So let's go ahead and install one of them and see how we can use these third party Gutenberg block plugin. So let's publish this page first and let's go back in our dashboard and in the plugin section, we will click on add new. And let's search for spectra so here is a spectra plugin let's go ahead and install it and then click on activate all right so here's the welcome screen and if we go in the blocks and extensions here we have the long list of blocks that we can use on our website so we have the container heading image button so all these blocks are available to spice up your page design now you might be wondering that why we have heading image and button block because we already have these blocks inbuilt in wordpress gutenberg so by using these blocks you get some extra options from spectra plugin so let me show you how it works so let's come back in our page so till now the blocks that we have used are from the wordpress native gutenberg block and here on the right hand side we can see the settings that comes with these native blocks now in the next line we will start using the blocks from the spectra plugin and to start with we will cover the structure block from spectra so if we click on this plus icon so first we see the blocks from spectra and they are highlighted in blue color so whatever gutenberg block plugin you use they might have their own color scheme and to start with we are going to use the container block which is a very powerful block and it's going to help us structure our page design so in order to add this we just simply need to drop it here and now we have an option to select the layout so maybe we can choose single column or two column layout or maybe a three column layout so you might found this structure very familiar if you have ever used element or page builder so this container block is also based on flexbox so it's very much like the one that you use with elementor so right now if we go with two column layout here we can see two plus sign which means that we have option to add blocks in both of these columns 
and here on the right hand side we have the block settings and if you look at these options again they look very similar to elementor but it's surely better than the native wordpress gutenberg block setting first we have general here we can preset the container settings and then we have the style in order to add some background border box shadow and all and after that we have advanced so we can play around with all these settings right now let's go ahead and add some block in the left hand side column or the left hand side container here let's go ahead and add an image and we will choose the one from our image library so again we have added the same image and on the right hand side maybe we can add some heading and some text so let's search for heading so now we can choose the heading from the WordPress native Gutenberg block or the heading from Spectra plugin. So let's go ahead and choose the one from Spectra. And now we have the default text here. And on the right hand side, you can see the option for alignment. Here we can choose the heading tag. And maybe we can also add some subheading. And then we can choose a separator. So this is how it's going to look. And if we click here, we can now type in our text and in the description we can type in some different text now after this heading now if we go in the toolbar here we have the copy paste option from spectra and we have the highlighting text bold italics and link and if we go in the top toolbar here we can click on insert after and now we can just simply add some text here so for that again we are going to use the heading block from spectra itself but this time we will convert this to p tag and now we can simply start typing our content so maybe something like this and in the style we can change the typography font size and all these stuff and we can edit pretty much everything from here and once we are done just click on insert after and after this maybe we can start typing button so here we have the default button from wordpress gutenberg block and we also have buttons call to action and marketing button from spectra plugin so here if we choose marketing button so with this we get a huge button which we can use for marketing purposes of course so you can change this text from here and play around with it or maybe you can use other button blocks whichever works best for your design now using this container and various other blocks from spectra we can create pretty much any kind of page design and if we click on this list view here we can see our container which is our main container and after this we have two more containers which are giving us an option for two column layout and in the first container on the left we have image and on the second container on the right we have our heading we have another heading which we turned into a paragraph and then we have a marketing button so once again we get a complete view of whatever blocks we have used on our page and we can of course drag and drop all the elements up and down using this list view itself for example if we want this text to be on the right hand side all we have to do is just select this container and then drop it here so now you can see that the text is on the left and the image is on the right so this is how easily we can rearrange all the blocks on our page now let's say we have designed now let's say we have added all the content on our page and we are done with the designing but we want to copy the entire thing from this page and paste it on a new page so all we have to do is just click on these three dots on the bottom right corner and here we have copy all blocks option if we click here we have just copied everything on this page and now we can just create a new page or post and then just paste all of this stuff on a new page along with that let's say we have this entire container that we have designed let's see the list view so we have selected our main container and we want this container to be used on various places on our website so i'm sure nobody wants to recreate this again and again so if there could be a way by which we can create a template of this section and then just invoke or add this template anywhere we want 
and that's where reusable blocks comes in. So let's say we want to reuse this complete container that we have designed. So all we have to do is just select the container or the block that we want to create as reusable block and then click on these three dots from here or from the toolbar. And here you will find an option says create reusable block. If you click on this, it's going to ask us a name. So here we enter a name custom row block and then save it. Now if you notice the container block is now renamed to custom row block the name that we have just given and the icon here is a little bit different because this is now a reusable block. And this is how you can create as many reusable blog as you want in order to use them on various places on your website. And if in case you want to see all these reusable blocks that you have created, you can go ahead and click on these three dots here and you will find manage reusable blocks option. So you can open this in a new tab. Along with that, if we close this and click on our plus sign here, now we have a new tab added here. It says reusable. If we click on this, here is our newly created reusable block. It says custom row block, the name that we have just given. Again, this is the name that we have mentioned for this block. And if we open our new tab, here we have the reusable block section. And here we can see our custom row block. If we click on edit, here we can see the or here we can see all the stuff in our reusable block and let's say we edit this from here here we just go ahead and create some edit and now if we update this here and let's update this page and now if i refresh this page from here we can see the content updated here as well because we have updated the heading in our reusable block now here comes an important part Let's say we are on this page. Let's say this is a new page and we want to add our reusable block here. So let's say we want to add it here. So all we have to do is again, either click on this plus sign here or just start typing forward slash and our name for the container, let's say custom. So this is the custom row block that we have created. Let's add it here. And if you open the list view, Again, we have the icon for the reusable block. Now, the important part is that whenever you add a reusable block on any page or blog post, do not edit that as it is. First, make sure you click on these three dots and then go to convert to regular blocks. Now you see, we now have a container block here. It's no more our custom reusable block. So whatever edits we do here, it's not going to affect our reusable block. If we do not convert this into a regular block and do the editing here, it's going to update on our main reusable block and it will reflect everywhere, wherever we add this reusable block. So make sure you keep that in mind. And with the help of these reusable blocks, we can create any number of templates and redesign and reuse them anywhere on our website. So this is how we can use some third party plugins and WordPress native Gutenberg blocks and then create any kind of website. If you want to learn more about how you can create complete website using Gutenberg, you can watch the video that we will list in the end of this video or in the I button above. And we are going to keep on posting more full website tutorials using Gutenberg. So if you want to deep dive in the world of Gutenberg, then make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you will get notification whenever we post our next video. So let's wrap this video here and I'll see you in the next one.